Hey, Craig, look, it's some of our favorite people, yes. our Today All Day viewers. We hope y'all are having a great Thursday. Uh, welcome. Welcome to our little digital show that we call Today in 30. It's everything you love about the four hours of our show broken down into a mere 30 minutes. Yeah, just a little bite size. Well, first up, the president's arrival overseas to begin his foreign trip, his first since taking office, and he's got a warning to Russia's president. Ahead of their big face-to-face -face meeting, we are in Britain with the latest on that. And then we're going to take you for a wild ride on Florida's newest, fastest, and tallest roller coaster. Yeah, then, Craig, you had a chance to sit down with NBA legend Dwayne Wade about his new game away from the court. That's got to be fun. I've uh, been a big fan of Dwayne Wade's for a long time. All of that and Oscar winner Helen Hunt. She's got a new TV show coming out. You're going to want to hear all about that. Time is running out, so let's get it started. Today in 30 starts right, right now. now. We'll start with the president's first overseas trip. It's opening this morning with a strong message of support to America's allies and a vow to stand up to adversaries, including Russia. NBC's chief White House correspondent Peter Alexander is traveling with the president. He's in the U.K. this morning. Peter, good morning. Hey, Savannah, good morning to you. President Biden will be meeting with British Prime Minister Boris Johnson only a short time from now at the start of a presidential trip that is packed. Four summits in the next seven days, that meeting with Johnson, then the G7 summit, NATO and the EU next week before that high stakes summit, the face to face with Vladimir Putin. The president tried to send the message that America is back to show that the U.S. and Europe are tight, that democracies can deliver against a rising China and a disruptive Russia. As some of the world's leaders arrive here in England ahead of this week's G7 summit, President Biden greeting U.S. troops in the U.K. and eyeing that crucial face-to-face -face with Russian President Vladimir Putin next week. I'm heading to the G7 and then to meet with Mr. Putin to let him know what I want him to know. Mr. Putin already appearing to test President Biden with new reports that a Russian court banned the political movement led by jailed opposition leader Alexei Navalny, likely with Putin's blessing. The latest in a series of disruptive moves by Russia, including the rise in ransomware attacks like those on the U.S. beef and gas supply. The United States will respond in a robust and meaningful way when the Russian government engages in harmful activities. Still, the president insists the U.S. is not seeking conflict with Russia. We want a stable, predictable, predictable relationship. But Putin is anything but predictable. And ahead of this one-on-one -on -one meeting, Republicans are slamming President Biden's approach to Putin. What does he do to our enemies? He shows yeah. weakness. He shows appeasement. He coddles them. Ahead of that meeting, the president's mission here to repair America's frayed relationships with its allies after four years of former President Trump's America First agenda. President Biden looking to enhance the special relationship with the U.K. and Johnson, who is friendly with Mr. Trump. Following three days of summit meetings, the president will be hosted Sunday at Windsor Castle by the Queen. Then in Brussels, meeting with the EU and NATO, an alliance Mr. Trump threatened to quit. And in a show of goodwill to the globe, President Biden, under pressure to do more, will announce that the U.S. will purchase half a billion doses of Pfizer's COVID vaccine to be donated to the world's lowest income nations. 500 million doses to be delivered over the next year. President Biden, of course, has decades of foreign policy experience, and he's hoping here to parlay some of those relationships with some of these leaders for some personal diplomacy while in Europe. But given the politics back in the United States, some Europeans have some real concerns about Mr. Biden, about his durability, and about whether his policies will stick. Savannah? Personal diplomacy. You did mention the Boris Johnson meeting. Of course, uh, the, the president says he wants to reaffirm our relationship with the U.K., but it's complicated. There's some history there. Yeah, you're right. They're certainly looking to fortify that relationship today. But as you say, it is complicated. As a candidate, uh, Joe Biden said that Boris Johnson was a physical and an emotional clone of former President Trump. But on the docket today, some crucial issues among them, one that Americans will be listening for very closely, is an effort to try to ease COVID-19 travel restrictions between the U.S. and the U.K. Savannah? All right. Peter Alexander traveling with the president. Peter, thank you. What's up, everybody? I'm Keenan Thompson here with the new Velasco Coaster Ride. 
here at Universal Orlando. We want you all to come to Universal and have a good time. But right now, this is Today All Day. Okay, it's time to check in with Dylan and Carrie Sanders, who've been reunited at Universal mm -hmm. Orlando Resort. Ah, uh, yes, they made the trip for the opening of its newest attraction. It looks like so much fun, the Jurassic World Velocicoaster. <laughs> we are so looking forward to this, and they've met a friend along the way. You saw him there, SNL's Kenan Thompson. That's right. Among other things, Kenan is an ambassador for the Let Yourself Woe campaign at Universal. Uh, good to see you guys. That's right. <laughs> good to see hey, you. Hey, everybody. You know, I... I couldn't do this alone. We are here at the Jurassic Park World for at Universal Orlando Resort for the opening of the Velocicoaster. It has been just a steady stream of people. They actually opened the park early so these folks can get to ride the ride, which opens today. Now, I don't want to say I planned this, but a couple years ago during uh, when Hagrid Ride opened at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, I also happened to be pregnant. <laughs> Whoops. To mm. So this time around, also pregnant, can't ride the ride. Sorry, guys. So I'm the stand-in. <laughs> Amazing. You guys know I'm never one to shy away from a challenge, but i got to be honest with you. I decided that uh, it'd probably be best if I brought along a friend with me. That's right. And so Keenan joined me, and I joined Keenan. That's right. I had to hold his hand, but at least I made a new friend out here. Yeah, that's what's we important. We were holding hands actually a little bit more. I'm like just gonna this. keep it yeah. throughout the rest of this interview. So. <laughs> <laughs> but 90 uh, degrees out here. Exactly. <laughs> but really, it's important to note that you know Universal Orlando Resort returning to normal is something that I think we've all been waiting for, Absolutely. and Velocicoaster is a great way to say we are back. We are back, baby. <laughs> It's the sound that screams summertime fun as Universal Orlando Resort and Universal Studios Hollywood get back into the swing of things. It's good to get out, get some sun, and be around other people. <laughs> A day at the parks filled with wizardry. Up close and personal interactions. It's awesome. And dance parties with some of your favorite characters. You could even say it feels a little bit like home. Welcome to 30 Rock, everyone. The action packed theme parks are certainly back in action. This summer, thrill seekers will come face to face with the brand new Jurassic World Velocicoaster. Go! Based on the iconic film, Brave Riders will race alongside the Velociraptor pack, catapulting to 70 miles an hour in less than three seconds before soaring 155 feet in the air. So the Velocicoaster is the fastest, tallest launch coaster in Florida, and we have combined to make a new species of thrill by adding these amazing immersive elements from the Jurassic World franchise. I knew I had to check this one off my bucket list, but I wasn't ready to ride it alone, so I called in some backup. Carrie! Hey, guys! Hello! <laughs> Hi, Groupon, there we go. Hey. Oh. We're good. Are you ready? Uh, I'm ready. Uh, Better you than me, my friends. No, okay. Sorry. I'm going to go get myself some food. Yeah. <laughs> Take care. Here we go. Dude, are you ready for this? <sighs> Sucking Just myself up. Breathe. Yes, We're gonna exactly. breathe through this. Yeah. Raptors are our friends. <laughs> Have you ever been in any vehicle at all that went from zero to 70 in three seconds? Yeah, I want to say one time with my grandma. <laughs> and there we go. Woohoo! Come on! Come on. Come on.
Oh, you missed a good one. <laughs> I had my hands full while you guys were gone, so no. you got to check out this picture. <laughs> That's called Two Friends Having Fun. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Dwayne Wade is a basketball legend, a three-time NBA champion, 13-time All-Star, Olympic gold medalist, the list goes on. And he hasn't let retirement slow him down. He's a part owner of the Utah Jazz and an executive producer and host of the new TBS game show, The Cube. He's quite the renaissance man. Dwayne has also become quite outspoken about LGBTQ plus rights, revealing last year that his daughter, Zaya, is transgender. He sat down with me to talk about all of it, his family, basketball, and... How the heck he ended up hosting a game show? I want to talk about the show in, in just a moment, but let's let's start with the Utah Jazz. You had uh, quite the, the playoff win this week over LA. How are you feeling about the playoffs? Well, it was it was an exciting night. You know, we haven't been in these territories often, so it was good for our young te younger team in this in this experience space together. And my wife got to come, you know, to the game for the first time, and we got to enjoy. Uh, being owners together. As you probably know, one of the criticisms right now of, of the league is this idea that you've got about maybe six or seven super teams, like the Brooklyn Nets, for instance. It doesn't make for a, a lot of competition during the regular season. What do you say to that? So the NBA is our job, and, and you know, whether it's from a player standpoint, uh, it's from an ownership standpoint, our job is to entertain, right? It's entertainment. And so, you know, sometimes the entertainment comes all in one package together. You get KD, you get Kyrie, you get Harden. Or sometimes it comes, you know, one guy here, one guy there. So I just think we should just continue to just enjoy sports for what it is. So let's talk about another game for a moment. This game show that you now produce and host, The Cube. I, I caught it. You seem like a bit of a natural, like you've done this before. Were you a, a fan of game shows before this? I grew up on a show in Chicago called The Bozo Show. I don't know if yes. a lot of people know about it, yes. but every morning, you know about the Bozo Show, Craig? It came on WGN. Brother, every morning before I went to school, I looked at that show religiously thinking that one day I would get a chance to get on that show and I'll be able to change my family's fortune. So to be in this position now, to be able to be now a host of a game show, an executive producer of one, and to be in that same position to help families be able to change not only their families, but community's fortune, Man, I couldn't pass up the opportunity. So how do you describe the cube to a stranger? You got to beat seven games. You get nine lives to do so. And also you get two assists, one from the cube and one from me. And you can win $250,000. And then the show outside of the cube with the contestants is where you get a chance to, to know a little bit about them and understand why they're there. And those are going to be the moments that's really going to connect everyone. You became a dad, if I'm not mistaken, at the, at the age of 20. So you've been doing this a long time. Any advice out there for, for dads uh, as we head into this Father's Day? Um, good luck. <laughs> 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 I've been able to have a kid. Zaire is 19 years old. You know, Cobb is two years old. And I've been able to see kids in different generations at different times and different parts and places in my life. And it's helped me grow a lot. It's helped me be a better parent and be a better person because I've seen that all kids are not alike and you can't treat them as such. Your daughter specifically, a while back, I remember reading and hearing some of the comments on, on social media. The way that, that you and your wife handled it could not have been classier. How have you navigated that, that, that part of it specifically? Yeah, it's, it's, it's made me grow. I didn't know anything really, uh, I wasn't knowledgeable at all about the LGBTQ plus community. What it has done is it opened my eyes and opened my ears to, um, you know, to something greater and bigger than I. And my daughter has has allowed us gracefully to be to be her support system. She's the strong one in this family. She's the hero. It's my wife. It's our family's job to make sure that we listen to her. You have so many titles: father, husband, entrepreneur, uh, New York Times best-selling author, uh, executive producer, Oscar winner. I could I could go on and on. Of of the titles you have, is there one that means more to you than the others? Yeah. That those are, those are the greatest words I ever hear. I want the, the next generation of ways to, to look different, to be different, and to continue to evolve. So when I hear my kids say, Dad, man, my heart melts every single time. What haven't you done that, that you want to do? I, I think it's so much more, man. You know, it's, 
What? What is left? Man, Craig, I don't know. But one thing I do know, I'm going to continue to keep an open mind. You know, I'm going to continue to walk through doors that, you know, may be open and it may be dark and I can't see inside of them. If I trip and fall, I got a great support system to help pick me up. And if I continue to fly, I'm going to bring everybody with me. What? Okay, I liked him before, but now I love him. The inspiring. D. Wade he's is, so great. And he's the quintessential renaissance man, too. Huh. Like, he's one of these guys, like, if D. Wade came in and said, he's like, you know, I'm thinking about running for president. I was like, okay. Sure, why not? Wow. President. No, I'm thinking about doing Okay, yeah. So he's in a really good place. Maybe you just gave him yeah. an idea. Uh, he's probably already thinking about it. Uh, <laughs> but The Cube, by the way, it premieres tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern, over on TBS. And for much more of my conversation, we chatted for about 20, 30 minutes, uh, you can head over to today.com. Let's well, check that out. Okay. Yeah. What's up today at 30? Uh, Craig Melvin here. So, I, I spent some time with Dwayne Wade yesterday, and I asked him, these days, when he stopped on the street, what do people recognize him for? I mean, is it D-Wade, the legendary basketball player? Is it the game show host? Is it, you know, Gabriel Union's husband, Zion's dad? Like, and you know what he said? Not basketball anymore. No. They recognize him for everything but basketball. Crazy, right? Willie, you're in Hoda's dressing room. Oh, I just quick change. Yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite Helen Hunt movie? Um, my favorite. Oh, that's hard. There's so many good ones. I'm going as good as it gets. She won an Academy Award for that. She and Jack Nicholson were incredible together, but particularly her performance in that role. But also, can I throw in like a twister for something totally different? You can throw them all in. Yeah, I love Helen Hunt. Love really your hard. kicks, by the way. Thanks. Those are the classic Stan Smith. And uh, oh, we're ready to go. Thanks, Oda. Okay, we are back with the one and only Helen Hunt, who grew up in the Hollywood spy spotlight. Just take a look at this photo from 1975. Wow. When Helen played Helga Wagner in Swiss Family Robinson. That's a classic. It's no surprise Helen would go on to become one of Hollywood's most celebrated and decorated actresses in 1998. She won the Best Actress oh. Oscar for her role in one of the all-time great movies, As Good As It Gets, alongside Jack Nicholson. On the small screen, in her eight seasons on Mad About You, she earned four Emmys and four Golden I mean, Globes. Amazing. And now the actress, writer, and director can be seen in the TV adaptation of the comedy drama Blind Spotting, where she plays the opinionated and loving mother, Rainey. Here's a sneak peek. Hey! hey, hey mom. Mom. Hi, my love. Oh, my God. That's such a big hug. You are such a tough guy. What's up, Nuffy? You ready for more adventures with your Thea? Hi, Thea. Oh, Rainey, no, sorry. Uh, the say Ah. Yes. I only smoke one a day. And this is my one. That's the last one in the pack. You know what? Doesn't matter. That's your second one. You had one this morning. I absolutely did not. You absolutely did at the kitchen table. No, that was yesterday. Sean, not endorse, please. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Helen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So blind spotting is it's blind spotting is a comedy, but for those that haven't seen the film, will you tell us a little bit about the the television series? Sure. It's um, inspired by a beautiful film made by Davi Diggs and Raphael Casal mm -hmm. about two best friends growing up in Oakland and the effect that the criminal justice system has on the two of them and their friendship. And the TV series picks up from there and follows Jasmine Cephas Jones's character as she is um, faced with losing her partner to another arrest. And it's how that um, arrest affects her, their son, her mother, his mother, forgive me, um, and the whole neighborhood. So it's about community. It's about mass incarceration. It's somehow funny. Yeah, There's just, dance and spoken word. It's really a beautiful, totally original show. It really is. Helen, before we go any further, I don't want to alarm you. There's a man <laughs> in the shadows sitting behind you, and I just, I thought, thought, I saw I that just thought you should know. There's a man <laughs> that is in... It's my publicist whose one job was oh, to make sure there was nothing in the shot but me, and the only thing in the shot is him. <laughs> we were like, does Helen know that there's a man looking over her shoulder?
It's going to be a memorable segment we just, <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm strangled from behind. For your own safety, um, we yes. thought you should know. Um, so <laughs> back, 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 back. He literally cleared every coffee cup, everything, and then he's sitting but there. But himself. Everything but himself in a mirror. And actually, the way it was looking did seem ominous because it was out of the mirror. It, it seemed, was. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just well, we don't know what's going to happen. Check the news later. You'll have a really good suspect right away. We're just glad you're safe <laughs> for now. Not a perfect crime. <laughs> so, so, Helen, back to the movie. So, you, uh, the series, you tweeted about the movie. Uh, clearly, you were, you were a fan when of I, it. Yeah. Uh, what I've did you see in, in it? Well, I've made independent movies, and I know how hard it is, even when they get good reviews or festivals like them, to actually get people to see them. So, I enjoy using, you know, whatever platform I have to support independent movies I love, which I did. So, I tweeted about this one, and then Raphael and David tweeted back and we DM'd and whatever happened next thing you know we were having a cup of coffee saying we should work wow. on something together so we spent time during the pandemic out on my lawn uh, oh, wow. watching movies on a cheap screen that I bought we oh. talked about um, writing a movie together and along the way I knew they were working on this blind spotting TV series and they kept making jokes about how they wanted me to be in it and I didn't know what to say about that because do they really or do I want to and <laughs> would it get awkward and then they finally called and said no we mean it and I feel so lucky I got to be in it. That's so Don't cool. you love the way that things work and in 2021 that a, t a tweet exactly. can lead to this whole partnership? It's super yeah, I never, I never could have imagined that could have happened. Okay, so Helen, as you mentioned, we've starred in so many roles. In fact, somebody before was like, "What's your favorite Helen Hunt film?" And I said three things, and then I was like, "Wait, she was in Girls Just Want to Have Fun." That's one of my <laughs> favorite movies of all time. So we're gonna we're gonna show you a screenshot of one of your films, if you're willing okay. to play along with us, and then sure. just tell us the first thing that comes to mind, no hesitations. Okay, ready? Okay. First yep. up, your Oscar award-winning performance with Jack Nicholson, as good as it gets. First thing that comes to mind. How fun it was to work with him. Okay. Okay, the next one, a film everybody loved, where you start with Bill Paxton, Twister. What comes to mind? <laughs> um, boy, a lot of um, crap flying through the air, <laughs> some of which landed in my eye. Um, and what a pain in the ass it was to shoot, and how good the movie turned out. <laughs> okay, you even worked with Tom Hanks and Castaway. Some, you know, some may think of Wilson when they think of his love interest, but you were there first. What comes to mind? <laughs> I think Wilson was the number one love of his life, but, um, you know, how fun it was to work with him and how beautiful I thought that story was. When you find a story you've never heard before, I ask them, like, can I be in that? Because that sounds really cool. So I was, look at, it was so fun to work with him. I haven't seen that picture. That scene near the end in the rain yes. just crushes you every time. Yes. Yeah, okay. no, it's pretty devastating. No, there he is. Yeah, you knew, you, knew you knew it was coming. You knew it was coming. I mean, it's like looking at a picture of, I don't know, your ha you know, your left arm or your best friend or something. I, I mm. so treasure every minute we got to work together. We're still friends. Um, we did this reboot. Yeah. If anybody misses those characters, they can go to Amazon and there's 12 episodes of how they went through Empty Nest together. Oh, I'm mm. super, super Sweet. proud of it. Yeah, of course, people want more of the reboot, but we'll let it we'll let it lie there yeah. because we can't pressure you any more than we already have. <laughs> no, if you'd like to if you'd like to pay for them, we're ready to go. <laughs> okay, NBC. There you go, Helen. Right, we are such you. fans. <laughs> a joy to talk to you. We have alerted local authorities. Yeah. They should be outside your door at yeah. any moment. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> we'll see how the day plays out. Okay. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you Helen. so much. Blind Spotting premieres this Sunday night across all platforms of Stars. You should check it out. Yeah, definitely. Don't you just love Helen Connors, too? Oh, I really do. I've loved her for years. And by the way, you got to tune in for tomorrow because we have another big show. Maroon 5 is here. They've got some new music to show off for us. Have a fantastic day, everyone. We will see you bright and early Friday morning.
Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.